Hi developers, subscribers and friends! Welcome to the 4Developers channel, I'm Stefan Bertosz and in today's video I will speak about how to create and deploy a simple Google Cloud function in Java which we will use to expose our simplistic REST API to public. All the links will be in the description of this video and as well in the GitHub repository in the readme file so you can copy and paste uh, faster and follow me within the tutorial. Did you know that Google offers free trial? Did you know that you can run cloud functions almost for free if you are within its boundaries? Did you know that you don't need to manage or provision servers to run code for the cloud function? Did you know that you can run Java, Node.js, Python, Go, .NET, Ruby and PHP? Did you know that you can run test the cloud function using the function framework and not only locally? If you answer at least once with no, let me guide you and explain all the bits and pieces. Of course, this tutorial is meant to show how to build from scratch and with various options like from uh, Google Cloud Console, um, manually with uh, Google Cloud SDK or automated with Cloud Build. I will explain all the details, all the best practices, but be warned, if you really, really want to expose your cloud function to public, you should, you should think twice. Usually in prod environments, only small portion of the APIs is unprotected and publicly available. But this is not so important for this tutorial. I just want to show you a simple tutorial where you can build your cloud function. At the end of the video, I will also speak about some options to secure it properly and give some more recommendations and what to do next and so on. So maybe let's start with a picture and let's show what we want to build. And then I will also show the API we want to build. So it would be easier to visualize what uh, I will be showing in the later sections of the video. So the picture which you can see is uh, is um, drawn in uh, Dravio, which is my favorite tool. And I have a video as well on this one, so check it out. But what it shows is we will be using a Google Cloud Platform, Cloud Function, and basically I will show in the tutorial multiple ways how to deploy and create a function. One in Google Cloud Console Platform by clicking this, then a manual way by using our local IDE and Cloud SDK and deploy this manually, and then automated way by using the source code which will be stored in the GitHub repository and then integration with Cloud Build, which will syn synchronize the code using the automatic trigger to deploy the cloud function. Then we will have as well the scenario where a user will call, call our uh, cloud function because we will um, publish this publicly without uh, any security and he will be able to uh, get users, add user, update user and delete user. I will then show in a couple of seconds what REST API we will build. It will be very simplistic one. So this is for the architecture or what we want to achieve. And now let's jump to the API definition. And for the REST API, I took inspiration by some of the free <laughs> APIs or API documentations which are available. So the link is in the description, but it should be very easy to understand because it's a user API. So basically we will have uh, methods which we will be able to get some users or all users, then uh, create new user, delete user, update user. Yeah, it's obvious. And the username object and the user object will have username, first name, last name, email. 
how cool is that or it exists maybe in all of the applications on the on the world uh, it seems to be well designed api uh, it fulfills all the uh, standard requirements and so on but we will not implement this in in the one-to-one -one way but i will use some simplified version for the tutorial like not implementing the the get user details and you know not all the checks and stuff will be implemented but for purpose of the tutorial it should be sufficient and because i know that you are not patient you want to see the code so basically i'm just showing right now the whole repository which is stored on the github so link in the description it has a nice readme file what uh, things you need to do in order to replicate the whole tutorial but basically it contains the whole project structure i'm using gradle for the builds obviously java cloud build and so on but we will go into the details later what is the most important thing is the source code or and we have the source code in the java class user, user function and what is important is that this user function is using the function framework and from from there it is implement or it has to implement a interface http function where there is the only method you need to implement or generate whatever you like and this has two inputs http request http response it can throw exception and our uh, implementations implementation is really simple uh, it's trying to implement the implementation details which were in the documentation for this rest api and it's pretty much really simple it is adding the switch for all the methods which we support like get post put and delete and some uh, default one which is for exceptional cases if somebody will provide something else um, and that's it you see a couple of lines of code not even 100 lines and that's our rest api obviously it's very simplistic but you can take an inspiration and see how that works what we are doing on the beginning we are initializing some classes or uh, variables which will be helpful for us and those are used uh, on multiple places like the writer writer is used mm, to write back to the response basically writing back um, the body then we are having a variable for content type where we are trying to then mm, to get a content type for from the request and if it's not there we are applying this then we are printing this content type so you see it and we are initializing a new json uh, variable so and then what what next there is a switch with all these um, methods so first one is obviously get where we want to get all the users and how do we do that um, I forgot to mention that <laughs> this is obviously a fake function and we are not using a database or something like that but we are storing our users in the map on the beginning uh, when the function is started initialized the map is empty so the first call to the mm, get will return empty uh, map of users but it will be anyway serialized uh, with using the json to json uh, json to json and then return to the body and we also set the response code to ok which is obvious or normal for the get calls then for the post calls which are usually there to uh, create a new object in this case we would like to create a new user we are checking if the content type is application json because we are expecting that the user will uh, provide us the data and if it's not uh, this kind of uh, content type we are basically throwing our error um, in the body and in the um, status code if everything is fine 
what we will try to do we will try to use the uh, input which um, which was provided by using request get reader and we will leverage the j json <laughs> json and from json uh, method to convert this json object to um, a normal uh, java class which will be a user vo this is our definition of the user and basically if that succeed we will put this user into our map and return a response code created which is 201 similarly we will also implement a put method which will update the user it will also check that the uh, content type is application json and if everything is okay it will get from the request path the first parameter which is under the slash and that's basically the username or we expect that it's a username if we would have a decent contract and if that is there we will also check if the username is present in our user map if yes we will read the data which is uh, again provided by the body convert it and uh, and set it back to the user map and it will automatically update the old user we will also write back the full uh, content of this user and set uh, http code okay if the user was not found then we will write we will respond with the error with the message in the body and we will basically respond with the http not found code which is 404 very common code then almost the last method which is delete and again we will get the user which we want to delete from the request get path which is the first parameter after the slash and we will again check if the user exists if he exists we will try to remove it and write back that is deleted and return the 204 and if not if it's not existent we will again write some uh, message into the body and return 404 if not of this get methods were called we will return a bad method a code and some message back and that's it here yeah? that's the code which we will run as a cloud function and it will be sufficient for our rest api i forgot to show the user view which has just four parameters username first name last name email and those are all string we are using some lombok data annotations for constructor and everything which is auto generating for us so the code is simple let's jump into some theory gcp or google cloud if you like has a lot of products and we should start somewhere so if you don't have an account with gcp yet create one it's free just put into the google google cloud free tier for example and start by clicking on this link it will not work for me so i will not show it but basically it will create a free account for you and you will get uh, 300 dollars in credits for uh, 12 months i think so it's great to start with and usually when you are there uh, when you have the account you will go to the console and the first thing which you usually uh, do is you will create a project so for creating a project you will have some uh, guide which you can use like click on the new project and specify the project name then billing account you will use your billing account organization i will not do this because i already have a project created for developers for this for this purpose but you can easily create a project by creating on the new project and just a very very quick uh, guide Th on the left you have a menu you can see all the pro products here in various sections or there is a new thing which they called uh, view all products and this is kind of a catalog uh, again with various sections and you can 
read a bit about this and use whatever uh, stuff you like. So for us, we are interested into the Google Cloud Functions. This comes into the serverless world or serverless section. And you can navigate it here and see the Google Cloud Functions. You can pin it so you will see it on the top. But basically, you can also navigate this if you like going to the serverless cloud function. It's the same thing here. And Google also has a decent uh, documentation. So if you follow cloud.google.com slash functions, you will see a lot of documentation, what they have, uh, use cases, uh, quick starters, and so on and so on. And basically, what is a Google Cloud function or what is a cloud function? It is that you can run the code which you write with no servers or no containers to manage. That means that you don't create those servers, but they will automatically start up when you deploy your cloud function. You don't need to care. And that's the serverless world. That doesn't mean that there are no servers. There are obviously some servers, but you don't need to care about that. And you just pay for the usage. What is interesting is that uh, the cloud functions are having uh, like two versions. And there is a version one, which is the current one, and the second one, which is uh, already public, but has uh, more like um, enhancements or, and those are nicely described in this link, which I'm showing, but in general, there are a couple of things uh, which you would like to know here yeah, that are uh, different between version one or first generation and the second generation. And that is longer processing times. What does it mean that with the generation one, you were able to do nine minutes, but in the generation two, it's 60 minutes. What does it mean? It means that you can run a cloud function, which will take up to 60 minutes and then it will be um, uh, like interrupted. Usually in the cloud function should be, you know, quick with their execution times. But that means you can also run some longer uh, workloads with the cloud functions. Then the other um, important thing is that you can also use some um, better CPUs. So they doubled the power. Uh, previously, it was uh, like you had maximum two virtual CPUs with eight gigabytes. Now it's uh, four CPUs with 16 gigabytes max. So you can run some fancy Java with a lot of frameworks or whatever. Then the other uh, important or, or new stuff which is coming there it's a traffic splitting, which is uh, very handy if you have multiple versions and you want to try some versions for some of the customers or you want to do uh, A and B testing or, or canary deployments or something like that. Then as well, there is an uh, important thing that uh, it's worth to mention is the concurrency that you can have up to 1000 concurrent requests in one cloud function, but of course, this is not applicable for all of the mm, frameworks or, uh, or languages, independent uh, on the underlying uh, technology, of course. But this can help you with uh, cold starts and basically with the scaling cost. Yeah. And the last word to mention is that they um, are basically adding a new cloud events, so more integration with, they, with their other products like BigQuery, Cloud SQL and so on, uh, with using of the event arc. And basically uh, this means in cloud function will natively communicate or integrate with their other products, which is great. You don't need to use some custom libraries or hack. And all of this is just because uh, they re-platformed and it means under the hood it is using currently the Cloud Run and even Arc for this integration with other event sources. 
which is kind of nice because they improve the power uh, concurrency and other stuff which will be very handy if you really write uh, more complex uh, cloud functions and let's jump to the other topic what uh, are the cloud functions triggers what triggers are supported uh, i would say there are really just two major categories one is the http triggers which reacts obviously to the http events and we will show this in our rest api and there are some other event triggers which are uh, basically there to react to some events from other products Event triggers could be like PubSub, Cloud Storage, and these new event arc triggers. You could also ask what are the supported Java versions. So currently there is a version of Java, uh, I think 11 and 17 supported. Okay, and how will we start with, um, with the cloud functions? So for the start, I would recommend to enable a couple of APIs which are needed for the whole tutorial, maybe not for uh, all of the parts, but it's good to enable them maybe in one go. So I created a simple link which you will be able to enable this. So if you um, see this, if you copy paste this link, you would uh, be seeing some kind of guide like this and you should confirm the project. Obviously, you will have some different project ID but click next and you should see that we want to enable cloud build for automatic builds cloud function obviously and logging so let's click enable this so we will be not uh, annoyed in the tutorial by uh, something which is not working because we didn't enable the apis voila it is enabled the next step is not needed but it's recommended as a best practice so what we want to create is a service account if we go again to the menu and we would click for the um, we would search for the im and admin and go to service accounts we should see something like that and uh, we will not use the default service account but we want to create a dedicated service account for our uh, function so let's click on the create service account and we should uh, put some reasonable name like user function for the service account and basically the service account id and email address is generated for us so this one we would copy paste and use then later on in our um, deployment steps we can click on create and continue and the only thing which we need to do is currently assigning a role and it should be an invoker role cloud function invoker role which we need that role that the service account will be able to invoke the cloud function and that's it let's click on done and you see this is our new uh, service account for user function which is great and recommended as a best practice if you want to learn more about the service account there is a page dedicated for best practices for working with service account there is a lot of to read enjoy okay and let's go back to the google cloud console and let me show you how to deploy a very simple cloud function by using just the google cloud console and clicking uh, this is the simplest way how to do this this is the first way so let's go to navigation menu cloud functions click on create function and now we have a nice wizard which will guide us we can choose between the first generation and the second one for the purpose of the tutorial we can use the first function name we can put hello world and the region i would like to put my uh, closer one which could be uh, europe west the type is http please keep it 
we will allow unauthenticated so it would be public require HTTPS that we want and we should save it and then more of the configuration will pop up here like the runtime configuration how much memory do we want let's choose this one timeout service account which we want so let's use our uh, user function service account scaling minimum number of instances and maximum let's put one then uh, we can configure other and stuff but we for purpose of this we don't need to do anything right now everything looks good so let's click next and here we have another guy which is showing us uh, some example implementations in various uh, languages so we can choose java and we can use the example which uh, google provides to us and it's really a simple hello world function nothing fancy so in this way we can deploy this but there are also other options in the source code you can use this inline editor or you can upload your zip package or use it from the cloud store or from cloud store repository so there are multiple ways how to put the code here but if you click deploy this will try to deploy your cloud function the first cloud function on google cloud it will take some seconds or minutes depends on how fast it is so the cloud function is deployed in screen which is great if we want to see this in detail let's click on the name and here we will see some metrics but right now this is not having any history so it's empty in the details tab we will see what service account uh, was used and all of the settings in the source we will see the source code which was used by the deployment variables we don't have any and trigger is the current trigger or url trigger is the http and basically if you click here you should be seeing a hero word is working the permissions is set to public so you should see all users are having access to our cloud function logs should show some logs produced by the cloud function if there are any so you see there are some logs and for testing purposes there is a possibility to test this by clicking on the test function this will put a call and later on if you scroll down you should see the output which is here then the, in the similar fashion you can use a test command in the cloud shell obviously you can as well modify this to issue some post or get request if you like this will open a new uh, virtual machine for you and pre-populate the command so we will see this in a minute, minute that it will start the machine and then execute the command so the machine is started you see this here and if you enter this will ask for authorization if you confirm that you want to execute this it will execute that and here you see the result which is nice And that's for cloud function via the google cloud console the simplest way now we will jump into the another way a manual way on your local machine in your local id so if you clone the github repository which i added into the description there is a nice readme file which you need to follow and basically the first step which we need to do is uh, install the cloud sdk how to do that there is a link so it depends on your so it depends on your in environment how you would like to install it there are multiple ways i'm using windows so i can uh, download the installer and and run it or using the powershell or whatever other um, variations you like so by downloading and installing the cloud cloud, uh, cloud installer uh, 
install also beta commands that is uh, handy sometimes. And voila, it is installed finally after ages. So you can click next and you can also click finish. It will usually do a Google Cloud in it where you need to provide some details. Uh, and if you already have that one, you can obviously reinitialize or create a new configuration. It's up to you. I will do the re uh, initialization. What does it mean? Because I created a new project, it will ask me a uh, couple of questions. It will ask me for which project I basically want to have this set up, so I will use the number three. And then we are good to go. Let's close it. And let's go back to the IDEA. And in IDEA we will check what is our next step. So the Google Cloud SDK we were installing because we want to deploy them manually. So therefore it's needed. But the project which I created is built by using Gradle. So it has a Gradle wrapper, Gradle uh, build uh, configuration. And if you use a command line and enter Gradle build, it will build. But let's first check what plugins it has. It has only Java plugins, a standard repository is more or less, but the dependencies gets interesting because we want to use this as our local development and for the testing purposes we also need some other libraries like function framework local in worker function framework apis and so on and some lombok and json which i created but more important for running the function locally there is a special task which uh, comes from google Anyway, that's, I would say, too complicated. Let's show how this command works and that really the Gradle build will be running if we execute this. So I open the terminal and in the terminal, if I put Gradle v build, let's see what happens. And hopefully it will be successful. Yes, done. So that's all. <laughs> now let's continue and let's execute this. So how to execute this? We will use the run function task. And basically what we need to specify is the target, which is our function name with the package. So let's do that. And what will happen? It will load our um, function server and we can see if we open the URL, the output, which should be more or less empty or... Yes, it's empty because we started a new function, there is nothing there. So this function framework, which we are using to run the locally, is the same a, uh, as it's used in production in Google Cloud function, or you can use the function framework to run it on Cloud Run or Knative environments. I also um, created a couple of commands which we can use if you have curl. So let's open the terminal in the other one and let's paste the curl command. The first command, which is basically a get, will have the same return zero. Then we will populate uh, or create a new user by using a post, curl post with the content type application JSON, what URL, it is localhost, and minus D means we will specify the JSON object. Because it is on Windows, it is escaped by this special syntax, but this is nothing special. And if we paste this, it will return HTTP 1 uh, protocol and 
201 which means create it fresh the page we should see that we have one entry which is cool delete we would like to delete Bob oh sorry I didn't copy paste it delete Bob returns 404 not found yeah obviously because Bob is not there so let's replace Bob with that and now it returns 204 no content so let's go to the browser let's refresh nothing is there so we delete it and made it clean up and that's for the testing yeah that's so easy so now uh, we tested this locally how to deploy uh, to the Google Cloud. As said, we installed the Google Cloud SDK, so we can use a couple of commands now. Uh, if we are not authenticated, we could use G Cloud uh, Out login. If we didn't configure the project, we could use config set project with the project ID. But if we had everything which we wanted, we just copy paste the whole command for the cloud functions deploy into the terminal and what does it say it says we want to use functions deploy the function name will be user function manual we will choose a region europe west 3 we will have an entry point in package functions user function we will use the runtime java 17 we will use the http trigger we want to have a memory of 212 megabytes we want to have public authentication or hello all public the time order function is 90 seconds we want to have zero minimum instance and max one we want to use our dedicated uh, service account let's enter after the installation of the gcloud sdk we should restart the idea and then issue the um, gcloud uh, commands so let's try it And as said, this G Cloud deploy command should deploy our cloud function to the cloud and it should have the user function manual name. It can take some minutes. And we can go to the console and see how it's going. So let's refresh here by clicking on the refresh and you see it is being already deployed here and voila the function is deployed we can check uh, in the google cloud console you see our function is here we can also use another command to get logs so let's copy paste this g cloud function logs read and the name of the function should return us some logs if there are any and you see there are some logs we can also test the function if we would like let's go to the details to the trigger and let's click on the trigger you see the result is empty obviously we also again could use the test command and provide as well the content uh, for this so let's try it and test it in the cloud shell it will again provision our machine if this was already closed and in the minus d we should provide the better data which we can copy paste from this uh, example for the post here uh, maybe let's modify some braces and you see um, 
the new one ah you don't see it but <laughs> the command was successful and if we if we would like to see it just go to the browser and refresh it and the user is there so that's our second cloud function which was deployed by using the manual cloud sdk command from our local and there is also a third way which i recommend is the best one to automate this by using the cloud build and for cloud build we already have a preparation because i already have prepared cloud build yaml in the git and it's obviously having uh, same commands as you would expect uh, uh, for the deployment because is using a cloud sdk which is being bundled as an image in the cloud build so that's great and the only thing which we need to do is to commit this maybe push it and configure then the integration for the cloud build and the repository how to do that i will show so i said the third one i want to deploy automatically and that is in the way that i would need to configure the cloud build so if you search for cloud build all you would go to the section which is for the uh, ci cd you would click on the cloud build and let's close something and we would first set up the cloud build um, configurations so we need to enable cloud functions so let's click enable yes we want to have access for the all then we would like to configure the trigger but for that we need to create uh, ah sorry we need to manage the repositories and uh, create a link between our github and and google cloud so let's select the source it would be github let's click continue he will ask us about whoop about the configuration usually you should uh, then be able to add a new github account so continue like that and selecting the repositories i already have this configuration so it found something let's check the mm, google cloud function java and i click understand because i know that it will synchronize and let's connect to that repository that looks good let's keep the default and let's also create the trigger and now let's create first time we need to click on the run build and let's click on the run trigger and build will start you can check the history it will change the status with time but you can click on the build to see the progress so as you see the build was successful there are some Uh, useful information but if we navigate back to the cloud function we should see the third cloud function which would be called user function build this was built automatically the only difference is that it doesn't have the public access enabled and we will show this that if you open the trigger it will say you don't have a permission but how can we fix it easily is we can add a user which is called all users and we can add a role cloud function invoker and this will ask us if we really want to allow public yes we want and now if we try this again it's working it is empty but it's working so you see 
it's the same thing but we deploy this automatically and whenever we push some code into the github it will automatically rebuild and deploy our new version of the function this will be displayed in the versions here then obviously for the cloud builder is also a lot of guides the most important is deploying builds and either here is the full guide which you can follow how to check some monitoring or logs there is a nice guide about that but basically if you go to your call functions there is the first tab called metrics you would see some monitoring information then of course there are some activity calls and for the logs you again would see some logging here in general you would log in the standard output or error error output if you want to secure your uh, cloud function how can you do that uh, either by identity or network base uh, there is again a lot of documentation about that i don't want to go into the details what we used so far are the service account at, at least to invoke this but there is much more to that and that's for some another tutorial so what are the best practices for uh, cloud functions there are couple of them and um, the most uh, important one is or the most which i think are important one is that you for each of the cloud function provide a response it means it will write back something um, then it's a good practice to use uh, for cloud function the nearest location in the region to set the timeout for the cloud function and to set min and max instances do not use default uh, default service account but create your own one and do not use system exit <laughs> and what about pricing um, you can find the pricing if you go and if you have rights obviously in the in the billing section so in the billing you should see a strip down billing information about all of the services but there are also other ways you can use a pricing calculator and in this way you can you can basically estimate the pricing for whatever service you are using and for example you would uh, choose cloud function location memory execution time and so on and if if you click add then there will be some estimate another details can be found at this link because pricing is dependent on the location so you can see how it differs and more than that cloud function pricing page should enlighten you and show what is the free tier what uh, how does it compute the pricing uh, and so on a lot of information you should check in general how to secure the cloud function is either to use um, epi gate api gateway or epg or cloud armor or something else yet yeah, that's again for some other tutorial are there some uh, other ways um, where you can build and deploy cloud functions with java yes and there are plenty of them like popular frameworks like micronaut spring boot uh, which uh, have their integration and you can use them to run cloud functions and of course all other JVM languages like Kotlin, Scala, Groovy they can be also used to build cloud functions what are the typical use cases for cloud functions uh, it is serverless, webhooks, real-time data processing, serverless IoT backends, intelligent applications using AI or BigQuery or whatever you like which fulfills the requirement that there is a time which cloud functions can run uh, it has a limited cpu and so on and that's all folks if you are interested there is uh, much more videos on the channel so check it out or continue with me on the next from the list don't forget to subscribe or click uh, on the like button and watch the videos uh, there will be also some video about the google cloud api gateway so stay tuned because this is you know next video you should watch how to really build a rest api on google cloud if you like to use some google cloud functions or cloud run or whatever else bye